welcome back friends welcome to another tutorial from brilliant bios in this class we will learn about transplantations so this is the introduction class so i will talk about the basic concept of transplantation and how scientists come to know that there are involvement of immune system during transplantation so the first is what is transplantation transplantation is nothing but donation of organ or tissue from the donor to the recipient and during this transplantation there are two outcome occur that is acceptance of the tissue or the organ or rejection of the tissue or organ by the recipient and in the beginning i want to mention here four type of transplantation can occur depending on the donor the first is autograft auto graft the second is isograft third is allograft and the fourth is xenograft depending on the donor there are four type of transplantation can occur the first is autograft that means tissue are transferred from one site to the another site of the same individual so autograft means same individual transplantation occur same individual tissue transfer like in a burned tissue burned individual tissue can, uh, skin can be transferred from one site to the burned site so this is the autograft where tissue are transferred like skin can be transferred from one side to the another side of the same individual so donor is same the next is isograft isograft means when donation of the organ or tissue occur between genetically genetically identical individual okay this is called isograft genetically identical individual this genetically identical individual can be strain of mice this is called inbred strain of mice or uh, identical twin in case of human or other animals so this is genetically identical anim individual that also known as syngenic you can remember this syngenic that means these two individual are genetically identical so this is isograft the next is allograft that means genetically different individual and this two different individual that is genetically different are called allogenic and i want to mention here that this genetically different individual actually is from same species same species but genetically different so this when transplantation or organ donation occur between genetically different but same species that is called allograft and the last is xenograft that means from different species so these are four type of transplantation can occur first is autograft isograft allograft xenograft in general it has been seen that autograft and isograft are generally accepted accepted but this allograft and xenograft generally not accepted that means they are rejected and i want to share the information that the rate of rejection actually depends on the tissue like skin is rejected faster than heart and kidney so depending on tissue the rejection rate can vary so these are the four type of transplantation and these two that means allograft genetically different spe uh, but same species and when transplantation occur between different species these two transplantation actually rejected okay so now i will show you three experiment by which scientist have come to know that there are involvement of immune system during transplantation rejection in the first experiment scientists 
took two different strain of mice. They took strain A mice and strain B mice. They transfer, transfer skin graft, skin graft from strain A mice to the strain B mice and they found that the strain B mice reject because these two mice are genetically different. That means this transplantation is actually allogenic, allogenic or allograft you can say allograft or allogenic transplantation. So this strain A mice is genetically different from strain B. When skin grafting occurs, scientists perform skin grafting from strain A to strain B, this strain B mice reject the uh, skin graft after approximately 12 to 14 days. 12 to 14 days later, this strain B mice reject the skin graft. They call it first set first set rejection first set rejection after few days scientists another time grafted skin grafted from strain B, strain a to the strain b so they another time graft skin from strain a to strain b after few days They perform the same experiment and they found that now the strain B mice also reject the skin but it takes 5 to 6 days now. So they call it, this is the second set rejection, second set rejection. So in during the second set rejections, the time is somehow low than the first stage rejections. So scientists come to know that there is some memory. Memory is actually generating in the strain B mice uh, towards the strain A mice strain, uh, strain A mice skin graft. So they are generating some memory. They perform another experiment, very simple. They took another strain. Let's suppose strain C, strain C. They took strain C mice and grafted skin they grafted skin from the strain C mice and they found that the strain B mice reject the skin graft from the strain C and took approximately 12 to 14 days that means this mice is showing the first set rejection That is very interesting. When scientists perform the first experiment, this is the first time they transfer skin from strain A to strain B. It take 12 to 14 days to reject the skin graft. When they transfer after a few days, second time the skin graft from the strain A to the strain B, the strain B reject the strain A tissue graft or skin graft. But now it takes very little time, five to six days. And also they performed another experiment. They took strain C mice and re, uh, grafted skin from strain C mice to strain B and they found that it took, the mice took 12 to 14 days to reject. That means this is the first set rejections. So from this experiment they come to know that something is present, some memory is present in this strain B cell that is actually helping to reject this strain A mice skin graft so that faster five to, so that it takes five to six days so now they perform a very important experiment that is called adoptive transfer they isolate isolate t cell so they isolate t cell isolate they isolate t cell t cells means cd4 cell and cd8 cell both cell they isolate cd4 and cd8 cell and transfer this cell to a strain B mice, strain B mice. So this strain B and this strain B mice are actually syngenic. 
they are syngenic that means they are genetically identical they are syngenic not only that this strain b mice are actually unprimed unprimed means this strain b mice this mice have not experienced any grafting from strain a so this is called unprimed when the second transplantation occurred that means this mice is actually uh, primed because it has actually experienced the first set of uh, grafting but this mice is not experienced any grafting from strain a so this is called unprimed mice and they performed a very interesting thing that is they actually inject they actually inject this t cell from the strain b mice to this strain b mice that is actually unprimed this is called adoptive transfer adoptive transfer so so they transfer t cell that is cd4 or cd8 from these experienced mice that have actually grafted and to this unexperienced or unprimed mice now scientists took the strain a mice strain a mice and grafted skin so screen graft occur so same experiment that the same experiment they performed from the strain a they grafted uh, skin from the strain a to the strain b and they found this unprimed unexperienced strain b mice showing rejection showing rejection after approximate 5 to 6 days that is very interesting they scientists actually found that when first time tissue transplantation occurred because this is the first time this mice is experiencing this skin grafting and they found from this first experiment that when first time tra tissue transplantation occur the mice take actually 12 to 14 days to reject that is the first set rejections but here as the scientist actually injected this t cell from this experienced mice in the unexperienced mice this mice is actually not showing the first set rejections this mice is actually showing the second set rejections faster rejection that is very interesting fact and scientists come to know that this cd4 and cd8 cells are actually somehow responsible for the rejection of tissue transplantation or organ transplantation so they performed another experiment of the cd4 and cd8 i will show you the experiment but before i want to mention here a very interesting fact that there is a another strain of mice that is called nude mice nude mice in this mice there is a mutation in a protein and for that reason this mice don't have any hair so they are hairless so this is called nude mice and they don't have thymus or some uh, mice have vestigial thymus so they don't produce cd4 cd8 cells they don't have cell mediated immunity okay that means cd8 or cd4 uh, cell mediated immunity this mice do not reject these mice do not reject allograft and also xenograft now you can understand what is the role of this cd4 and cd8 cells in this nude mice there is no cd4 and cd8 cell because there is no thymus or vestigial thymus so this nude mice can accept so they accept so they accept allograft and xenograft that is actually generally rejected by other normal mice so those cd4 and cd8 cells actually helps in the rejections are called in case of allograft they are called alloreactive t cells alloreactive t cells it could be cd4 or cd8 cells so now i will show you another experiment by which scientists come to know that there is some role of cd4 and cd8 cells in the second experiment this is very simple experiment scientists perform three things first is they remove remove cd8 positive cells 
CD8 positive cells from the recipient mice to see whether there is any role of CD8 cell. So they isolate or remove CD8 cell and they found that those mice don't have CD8 cell, they reject they reject the allograft or xenograft and take approximately 15 days. So now you can see there is no change when there is no CDH cells. After removal of CDH cells, there is no change in the uh, rejection period. So rejection period do not change. Because I have told you, in normal case, the first set rejection requires 12 to 14 days. And this case, in this case, after removal of CDH cell, the mice is showing the same rejection period. It takes approximately 15, to 15 days. Now scientists perform another thing. They remove, they remove CD4 positive cells. And uh, they want to know what happens now. Now the rejection period or rejection period, they found that after CD4 cell removal, those mice reject the tissue and takes approximately 30 days. Okay. After removal of CD4 cells, they found now the tissue rejection is actually slowed down. The period actually 30 days. So the mice take 30 days to reject. Okay. So there is a very important role of CD4 cells. They also perform another thing, another experiment. They remove CD4 positive and CD8 positive both cells and they found that the rejection period now prolonged approximately 60 days. So from these three data they come into conclusions that there is a correlation in between CD4 positive and CD8 positive cells. There is a correlation between these cells because when they remove only CD4 cells, it takes 30 days to reject. But when they isolate, remove both the CD4 and CD8 cells, they found that now the mice reject the tissue and take approximately 60 days. So now tissue rejection actually prolonged. The time requires to reject the tissue prolonged. So there is some correlation between CD4 and CD8 cells and there you can see that only if you remove CD8, the rejection period remains the same. So that means the CD4 cell that is actually called T helper cell actually helping the CD8 cells to reject. Okay. So this is the uh, cell part. They actually scientists perform this experiment and they come to know that there are important role in CD4 and CD8 cells. Now I will show you another experiment by which they come to know scientists understand that there is a molecule that actually very important for this tissue transplantation or transplantation rejections. This is the third experiment. Now in the third experiment, scientists coming to know a very important molecule that is actually responsible for tissue transplantation rejections. They call this molecule major histocompatibility complex. They name this molecule major histocompatibility complex. Major histocompatibility complex that means MAC. MAC. MAC molecule. I have made a separate video on MAC molecule. The name implies major. Major means it has a major role. In histo means tissue. Compatibility means compatible. Or you can say that uh, the recipient, whether the recipient is compatible for the donor tissue or not. And complex means it's a molecule. So they call it, name it, major histocompatibility complex. They found that there is some link between this molecule. Yes, there is role of CD4 and CD8 cell. This is true. But this alloreactive CD4 and CD8 cells recognize this MHC molecule. If there is any difference between this MHC molecule, uh, tissue transplantation actually rejected. So 
this molecule is very important and scientists come in to know by a very simple experiment i will show you they took different strain of mice a strain that have mhc molecule h2b and they took another strain of mice that have h2k mhc molecule so these are the mhc molecule this is mhc molecule it could be mhc1 or mhc2 so this is mhc molecule so they took different uh, strain that have different mhc molecule and they cross these two strain of mice and found f1 generation that is that carrying h2 b and k not b or k b and k means both mhc molecules so this mice have both the mhc molecule that is h2b and h2k now they perform very simple experiment i am showing you they took the h2b mice and transplant tissue from h2b to h2b strain h2k strain h2k and also to the f1 generation h2b or k so at first they took h2b mice and transplanted in three strain first strain second strain and third strain because this is now a different strain this mice have h2b and k both this mhc molecule they perform simple another experiment they took h2k mice and transplanted tissue from h2k to h2b h2k and also the f1 generation that is h2bk and they also perform another experiments they took h2 h2 b k strain and transplanted h to b k mice h to b mice and h to k mice if you have any doubt about msc molecule why it is called h2k you must uh, watch my video i have made separate video on msc molecule basic concept of msc molecule and some experiments of msc molecule now in this experiment they took three different strain h2b h2k and h2bk mice and transplanted or grafting tissue into three different strain and they they actually show that when tissue transplantation occur between this h2b and h2b mice that means same mhc molecule those having same mhc molecule tissue transplantation accepted in case of f1 generation mice that have h2b and k both mhc molecule when tissue transplantation occur between this h2b and h2bk tissue transplantation actually accepted only where there is a difference between mhc molecule like h2b and h2k tissue transplantation is rejected the same is true for h2k mice when h2k mice tissue is transplanted to h2b this is rejected but as this h2k mice have mhc same mhc molecule they are accepted this mice also have k so they accept and in case of now the, the, this is the very important and very interesting fact h2bk mice when tissue transplantation occur between the same strain h2bk tissue transplantation accepted but this mice is generating from this parental strain because you can see h2b is the parent h2k is the also parent so so these are the parental strain but when this f1 generation mice is transplanting tissue from this h2bk to h2b the tissue is not actually accepted it is rejected also in case of this mice this is rejected so parental uh, strain could not carry the f1 generation mice why because you can see here this mice have h2b mhc this mice have h2b so there is a similarity but as these mice have h2k a different mhc molecule that is not present in this case in this mice so this is actually not accepted so here from this experiment scientists come to know that similarity between mhc molecules is very important so nowadays also 
MHC matching actually occur. This is called tissue typing. When tissue or organ is actually transplanted from donor to recipient, the recipient uh, gene or the MHC gene are actually um, sequenced to match with the donor. This is called tissue typing. This is called tissue typing. Okay. In this process, actually, uh, the MHC molecule or MHC gene that is present in the recipient actually sequenced to match with the donor MHC molecule. This is called tissue typing. So nowadays also, it is important to see whether there is any uh, difference or similarity between MHC molecule. If there is any difference, then the tissue can be rejected. And if there is similarity, most of them that actually found that tissue are accepted, transplantation accepted. But here you can see that as this case in this mice, H2K is present, but B is not present. This mice also cannot accept tissue from this strain mice. Okay, so from this experiment, scientists come to know that MHC molecule have a major role. Now I will show you three important molecule for that reason, uh, very fast tissue rejection occur, very fast. The first molecule, the first molecule is, you must remember, ABO blood group antigen. This is very important. This is the first antigen. If there is any uh, difference between donor and the recipient. So there is very important thing that is the matching of donor and recipient. Okay, donor and recipient. If there is any mismatch between ABO blood group, as we know, there are two uh, antigen that A antigen, B antigen. So, if there is any mismatch between this ABO blood group, then tissue transplantation rejection occur. And now you can ask me that why this ABO blood group is important? Because we know that during the blood transfusions, when uh, someone donates blood, then ABO blood group matching is important. But why MAC molecule is important for the transplantation of uh, other tissue? Like it could be heart or kidney or skin. The important fact is this ABO antigen is actually not only present on RBC, it is present RBC, but not only RBC, it can be present in the epithelia, epithelia and also endothelial cell. You have to remember this. This ABO blood group antigen also present in RBC, not only RBC, epithelium and endothelial cells. So as the tissue have endothelial and epithelial cells, so this antigen can be actually, if there is any difference, the uh, tissue can be rejected. The second important point I have mentioned here, the second molecule is major histocompatibility complex. This is very important, you can see here. Now, the third is, another important molecule, they call it minor histocompatibility. You can say it is minor histocompatibility antigen, not uh, MAC, but minor major, it is minor histocompatibility antigen. One of the example is HY antigen of male individual. All male have a antigen that is called HY antigen that is produced by y, y chromosome that do not present in female. So this type of um, uh, difference that is very subtle is called minor histocompatibility antigen. There are different loci present for this minor histocompatibility antigen. So these three molecules are actually responsible for the fast rejection of tissue. And these are the experiments by which scientists come to know that there is involvement of T cells and they found that CD4 and CD8 cells collaborate each other and there is a role of MHC molecules. So if there is any difference between these three uh, antigen, then tissue transplantation rejection can occur. So this is very basic class about the transplantations. In my next class, I will talk about, I will show you why our immune system or how our immune system actually reject tissue transplantations or organ transplantations. There are uh, three types of rejection can occur. One is hyperacute rejections 
acute rejections and chronic rejections and scientists have discovered many suppressive drugs that could suppress our immune system to reject not to reject the tissue transplantation so this is all about this uh, basic concept of transplantation immunology if you like my video subscribe this channel so that you can get the latest video updates at first and if you have any doubt about this topic you can write me in the comment section thank you for watching and always keep learning